Okay, we can start. Good morning. This is uh, week 09. We have two lectures. And next week, we also have two lectures. And uh, then, uh, we are going to uh, have October 4th. We are going to have uh, this Monday. I will give a talk. After that, I'm going to be on a trip. So, on October, December uh, 6th, I hope we are going to do uh, RMI and the Robust Control Toolbox. Give a tutorial, and uh, Professor Zhang will replace me to do that. Professor Zhang, PhD work. Was, uh, was on the RMI, so she has a thorough understanding of it, of the topic. Uh, she will play with the robust control toolbox. I'll spend some quality time with you about this toolbox. Okay? So that's a replacement talk. Otherwise, I will be giving a talk through towards the end of the semester. Today, uh, I thought about it. Probably it's a good idea. We step back a little bit and talk about uh, linear algebra, uh, singular value decomposition, and all those uh, basic facts. Okay. <coughs> But that will be really helpful for us to study uh, structure singular values, the mu. Okay. The mu. The mu. Uh, this mu uh, was thought about the modern modern control tool. Okay. Modern <coughs> modern control. Modern control, there is a modern modern control. Okay. Uh, this is actually a, a quite a mature topic. Um, I believe, I believe there's still room for future groups, okay? For research topic uh, on mu. Uh, let's say modern mu. <laughs> Research on the modern mu is possible. Okay, so we are facing big data. Uh, we are facing a lot of structured information. How we can extract the essence of that? Doing robust control and optimization with minimized conservatism. Okay, so. So how to make this one go down by leveraging the structure and so <coughs> So that's, I think there's room for research. Uh, so today I'm going to cover until DK iteration part. And it looks like already a very perfect framework to do a robust control design, okay? So it is amazing that uh, when I was uh, studying this part, I thought, oh, we can stop here or what's going to go. But in the end, it is not. So the key issue here, key issue here, is because of the D is for scaling, K is the design, the robust controller. Controller. The design. I designed this D and K, D and K. That kind of, uh, Iterative way, uh, making the everything uh, uh, optimization actually is not complex. You know that when the optimization problem is not complex, then you cannot plan global optimality. Okay, and uh, probably you premature stop at some very bad local optimal. And you are using that to control, so it's not optimal. So in the industry, the, the people will ask a question about 
how do you know this is autumn? You know? So this decayed origin have this kind of issue. But uh, people usually use another word for fortunately. Fortunately, in this decayed origin um, based mu synthesis, robust control design, fortunately, will also always lead you to a good uh, controller. However, you cannot use this to convince industry people, say, whether this whole system will work optimally and robustly, that depends on your luck okay? or fortune, whether you are fortunate or not. So that's, uh, that's the big issue. Issue, I can say even today, this is still an issue. Still an issue. So therefore, we need to move on beyond that. After we have two preparation chapters in here, one is called regular parameterization. I gave a small motivation last time. Uh, I'm going to repeat this one for the next lecture I'm going to do. Then uh, about algebraic Ricard equation. So we need some preparation in here. Then after that, we are going to move very quickly to H2 and another chapter on H infinity. Okay? Okay. And we are going to also uh, going to move quickly from here, pure time domain, and uh, to another new uh, framework from frequency domain points for loop shaping. So we can still say H2, H infinity loop shaping. Using that, so these are basically our roadmap towards the end. Okay, towards the end. And for RMI, uh, that uh, this one you are going to learn here is to me is kind of pure state space framework. Okay. And of course, you have a RFT uh, mu is already a decay duration. But this is one way. Another way is just you have RFT uh, description, then you do state space, then you go H2 or H infinity. So, um, so this can be uh, equivalent to solving a linear matrix inequality <coughs> okay, problem. And uh, there's an equivalence there. Okay? I hope you will be able to appreciate that. So that's basically what we are going to do in the rest of time of this semester. So this is week nine. Uh, you start to catch up. The more you catch up, the more confidence you will have. The more joy you will, you will have in your lecture. Otherwise, you are, the distance is getting you away and away. You, you, will, you will lose your confidence because the math is still very dense. And so that's why we look back today. and. Uh, we are going to uh, we are going to take a look of our singular value decomposition. Uh, we do a few slides on this part. Uh, it is very interesting to see that here any type of matrix, not necessarily square, okay. You can always write it uh, diagonal like this. So you can put this one, sigma 1. Sigma 1 itself is a uh, is a diagonal, okay? Sigma 1 to sigma p. Um, so these are both uh, partitioned matrix. Okay, so this is zero min, min, is a p is a n minus p n minus p. So this is a p by p. Okay, so this is a square. Okay, and you can see if you can make this matrix doing through similarity transformation, which is not actually for the unitary matrix is doing this. U one to u m, u one to u uh, v one to v n. So this is a vector. This is a vector. Okay. Then you are going to have, this is called singular value, uh, decom singular value decomposition. So this is decomposition to this format. Uh, 
it is always possible to do that. Always possible to do that. And in the P is minimum of this. Uh, but it may not be true. This is talking about full column rank or full row rank. So, but um, they could be smaller even, right? If the, the matrix is uh, rank deficient, deficient. So this is uh, may not be really needed, okay? But um, so these are the good measures for the size of a matrix. Otherwise, all are uh, zeros. So this is singular value uh, decomposition. So sigma ones and singular values. And usually we use sigma one as the largest. And these singular values are all positive. Okay. And also we talk about in and out because a matrix is a mapping between a vector to another vector, right? A vector to another vector. Then there's some coupling. Uh, about in and out directions. So singular values are good indications of strong or weak input or output directions. So or sometimes we call this is who is the principal contributor of a given output. Then you have many inputs. So who is influencing the most? So that's using a singular value decomposition to uh, do this. So in machine learning or in many of the data processing, people use call something called PCA, principal component analysis. Okay, PCA is simply based on SVT concept in here. So in that sense, we can write um, A V I and sigma I V I U I. Okay, or you do transpose is the same. Uh, when we say there's one thing we probably should say, you uh, you transpose they should uh, form an identity, right? Identity. So so called unitary matrix. Okay. Unitary matrix. So U and V are square matrices. Okay, square matrices. But the square square matrices U and V. Uh, they have u transpose u will be unit, so that's called unitary. Okay. So because of that unitary uh, condition, we can write uh, the v i, u i, v i is a v i is a like this. V i is here is kind of a <coughs> column vector. Okay, column vector. So you have a column vector in here, times A is the same as the UI times the second I. So these are very important the relationship regarding in and out, or who is connected to whom. Okay? So these are also those the second I is like a strength. So, in other words, in other words, <laughs> I think uh, Derek once we forgot this square wave here. Uh, that's because of uh, the property here. Uh, because AVI is UI, okay? So then you can write, you can write this square format. You can do uh, the UI is one of sigma i. So then based on both, uh, the, the first one, you will get this one. Um, so then, you know, A transpose A, if you do a, uh, it's a, eigenvalues of A transpose A, okay, A transpose eigenvalues, and then it's a sigma I square, okay, so one square. So we use sigma one, it's called largest singular value of A. Okay, single value of A. But you do eigenvalue of A transpose A, that will correspond to sigma I squared. Okay? Mm -hmm. I squared. So, and also we talk about minimum. Okay? Sigma minimum A. So, if A is a square and the minimum, 
if a is a square and the minimum singular value is zero, then this matrix is singular. It's not the invertible, right? It's not invertible. So it's a rank is not full, full rank. So it's deficient. So with that, with geometrically singular value of a matrix A, um, is kind of like uh, something like this. So you is you establish the y vector is a x, okay, and you assume that x is one. X is 1 is what? X1, X is 1 is a circle. It's a very unique circle. Okay? Very un unique circle. Uh, yeah, sorry, unitary circle with a radius 1, right? Okay? So um, then the Y will become uh, some sort of not circle, but elliptic, or this way, or whatever way. Okay? Then uh, it is uh, lens of the semi axis of the hyper ellipsoid E. <coughs> so this Y becomes, the vector Y becomes Y1, Y2, Y, and uh, YP maybe. So construct another, uh, not, not unit, not unit circle, but unit uh, hyperspore, but uh, ellipsoid. Okay. So, in that sense, V1 is the direction in which Y is largest, okay? For all this direction, uh, all the X is 1. Any, any X is 1. The largest one is V1, okay? That's why, that's why we use this as a worst case game. Remember to infinity how we define it? It's a sigma bar, okay? So, so this is the largest, uh, largest amplitude largest amplification so, so I, I think from this perspective you will see that uh, uh, Vn is the direction in which y is the smallest okay smallest okay so from that perspective I hope you will understand you can also always say that sigma bar a is for all the x is 1 then the maximum value of this one and this one is nothing but sigma bar we have learned sigma bar is an induced number of matrix infinite norm right so this is this sigma bar a okay should be written as infinite norm of a matrix is induced from that two norm so if we don't write the norm is by default we, we mean Two norm, okay. So we didn't put two here because there's no need to highlight this is a two. But if I don't write anything in here, by default it should be two, okay? This. Okay. So in, in, in other words, this thing is nothing but the a infinite norm, right? Induced norm. That's why we we talk about this. But if I have a transfer function matrix, the same idea. But it's, the sigma bar is frequency dependent. Okay? Then you scan all the omega, the frequency. Then you have a peak of the sigma bar. That is for actually the norm of that transfer function matrix system. Okay? All right. So if A and delta are square matrices, you can consider the delta as a perturbation to A. So the minimum uh, singular value difference bounded by maximum single value of delta. Uh, so this all can be proved. Uh, we are not going uh, to do anything here. And this one is also true. The minimum single value of the product will go uh, not less than this one. Independent minimum single value. Uh, this one is exactly equal, which is smallest versus the highest, so it's invertible. So these are the properties of uh, singular value decomposition. And uh, also there's another important uh, property is uh, the rank condition, okay? The rank condition. So if you have something until r, greater than r plus one, starting from r plus one, everything is zero, then your rank of a is r. And r, uh, yeah, the r is not equal, it's less than the minimum of that. So 
Cervantes is R, and uh, it's from the V, you remember a V and a U, okay? Um, so you can use V vector, a V matrix, um, to construct the corner of A is a span of uh, R plus one until Vn, okay? The corner uh, of A, th this is called a uh, complement, okay? Uh, then it's some sort of Vr and V1 until Vr. So e imaging of A, uh, and it's, it's a, it's a complement of that, uh, then it's this. Okay, so this is called dialectic uh, expansion. Let me uh, check whether you understand what I'm saying here. So A is a matrix N by M, okay? It's not square, N by M. So let's do a, a, do a check. So this is a, a R by R. So this is R by R, this is a square, okay? And U R and V R uh, is, uh, U R V R is different, okay, like this, okay, like this. So this is sigma R, R, so sigma R, so others are all zeros, okay? All zeros. So from that, I only need to do a finite summation of all this. So this is called a expansion, okay, expansion. So A matrix can be written as an expansion. But remember, if the UI uh, is uh, rank uh, one, uh, uh, it's uh, n by one, okay? N by one. And this one is one by m, uh, one by m. Uh, let's say, this is, sorry, this is, uh, uh, this is A is m by n, can you say that? m by n? So this is one by n. This is one by n, or you have transpose one by n. This is m by one, n by one. So m by one and one by n, so you have m by n, okay? Okay? What is the rug of this guy? Okay, no, rank one. What is the of this guy, rank one? So when you have a matrix, this is a matrix n by m by n. Okay, it's like the same as a size, the same as a. What is the rank of this guy? What? But, but you have R of n. Rank one matrix. So you have a there's a big matrix. Rank is only one. Think about it. Okay, and but you have R of those rank one matrices add together become a rank R matrix, which is M by N. So that kind of decomposition, uh, uh, oh no, I would say expansion, okay? Expansion is sometimes very useful in your uh, analysis. And in fact, we have used this type of uh, thing in our SSB mu uh, analysis, okay? So this equation is not very, this equation probably is, um, is, a, is not very familiar to a lot of people here. Yeah. Because in the later part in the new analysis, they use this uh, <laughs> many times. Uh, okay, so, right? And this type of rank one construction is uh, also very useful in uh, many uh, uh, places. And of course, you can consider to have uh, not R, but uh, let uh, have a K less than R. So you do an uh, expansion, you do a truncation. That was the uh, that's the truncation arrow. Um, it is basically uh, uh, bounded by sigma k plus one. This is kind of interesting result. I never used this before. Um, anyway, I, I think uh, I think it's okay. Uh, generalized inverse, we probably should not take a look. We have it in our textbook. So let's move back to our. Uh, our um, structure singularities.
spend about 25 minutes on uh, we are going to today we are going to quickly review what is uh, meal okay and there are a lot of examples here a lot of topics related to meal but in the last part we we'll only talk about what is the general procedure for the mu synthesis? When we say mu synthesis, it's basically like a giving the, the structure like we, we did this one before. You're giving M, you have delta, uncertainty. So you have a, so TZW. So here you have a robust controller. Okay, robust controller. So how we can design the controller giving M given delta. Okay? How to design this K. Okay? Design this K. So it is called mu synthesis. Mu synthesis. Okay? Mu synthesis. Um, that controller design synthesis is basically you have step by step you will get the result. Uh, it is quite beautiful, but unfortunately, it is, sometimes you should not trust it because it is a uh, non convex optimization solution. And uh, let's, a lot of details, a lot of details, but um, let's start with this picture I have seen for you. You have a nominal plant, or we, we don't call this a nominal plant anymore. We call this a nominal uh, connection, okay? system connection. So you can see that uh, the TZW, uh, that is closed loop transfer function from W to Z, can now be written in a very compact form using RFT, low uh, linear fractional transformation framework. Okay? And, uh, then for analysis part, so we want to see whether this is internally stable. Yeah, you can check that. And uh, basically, you check this uh, invertibility here. Okay. So whenever you have a MIMO connection like that, you should check the internal stability. Okay. Uh, this this one we are going to come back and review it from time to time. What is uh, for unstructured uncertainty? What we can do? What are we going to do? Um, uh, as I told you, the analysis and the synthesis could be conservative. Okay, conservative. We want to use the structure information from structure information from the uncertainty set. So here we didn't talk about the uncertainty set. So then uh, we, we can, what we can do is only inside of this table say, oh, what do you assume you know about your input? Well, your input is uh, non-bounded, okay? All your input is impulse. So what do you want to do? I, oh, one of my output is energy uh, less than one. Two norm square is energy, okay? All two norm is less than one. Oh, I just want internal stability. So this is small gain. I'm um, sorry. This is the yeah, this is small gain theorem. Okay. Um, but this one is our next 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 chapter will be H two infinite uh, H two uh, optimal control problem. So basically, we, we leave in here and here how we can get the K in the sense of H two. Make sure. So if you don't have the control in here, this one might be greater than one. How you design the K such that this is less than one always for all possible delta. So that is uh, robust control. But we, we, we assume we don't have delta. This is not uncertainty. We don't have uncertainty here. So this is un no uncertainty how you design the control. Okay? When you design a controller, then you can you can use uh, the small gain theorem to check, like the matching thing. Worst case, okay, so good news is in reality we always have some knowledge about our uncertainties. 
So I have two parts. One is called uh, S, S number of scalar. S stands for scalar, okay? So number of scalar uncertainties, okay? Or block diagonal scalar. It's a diagonal, okay? Scalar and all diagonal. All S could be simple, <laughs> scale. So number of uh, those block diagonal, okay? This, so it may be scalar, so this R1 is one. But it could be repeating, okay? Delta one repeating. So this is a scalar or di diagonal, okay? But these are called fully populated uncertainty. So these are diagonal, 1 to F, F of them. They are diagonal, and they are, for each of the delta, okay, is fully populated. We don't know what's inside. We assume, well, we know nothing about it. So that's who, this delta S is called <coughs> uncertainty set, with structures assumed as scalar, block scalar, or uh, block diagonal, fully populated. So so this one, of course, we assume this whole thing is RS infinity. Then uh, we also assume that proper scaling, everybody, worst case, RS infinity norm is less than one. Okay. So what do we mean uh, robust ability? So you have a uh, the connection system in here. Connect to these. So are they a will postness? So here, yes. You want to do this one is H infinite norm less than one is sufficient, but may not be what? Necessary. necessary. So it, it means there's some conservative, right? So, so that's uh, too much, okay? But it is also possible that we say, oh, just individually, ch channel by channel, that's not going to work. It's too optimistic because you you ignore those off diagonal interactions so if you say I only check the ice channel no 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 that <coughs> problem is not going to work so so how are we going to do it so then it is called structured it's called structured robust stability check okay but how we can do it? So then we need a kind of singular value concept. So it is called uh, singular value, structured singular values, SSD for the mu. But um, we start with unstructured case. Then we put our structured case. So you will see it is almost the same. So we talk about, oh, you have M, then you have delta, you connect it. So we want to define uh, something called internal stability means, this uh, instability means the uh, determinant of this matrix is zero, then, so the inverse does not exist. So therefore, that connection is internally not stable, or it's not well posed, okay, well posed. So in this case here, uh, we didn't uh, impose any structure on this delta, just in general, saying that uh, uh, the worst case sigma bar of delta make this one zero, then probably is the boundary, the maximum delta I can tolerate. So then I, I need to uh, choose my delta smaller. So um, in that sense, we need to define something like, hey, I have all types of deltas fully populated uh, for so pick up one delta, I check it's a sigma bar. Uh, this delta will make this uh, singular, okay? Then uh, among all this uh, making this uh, singular, all delta, I check it's a sigma bar. Among all sigma bar, the maximum uh, singular values, I check the minimum possible ones. That is called alpha minimum, alpha minimum. And uh, so, you can write uh, the why we say alpha minimum because this is equivalent to saying that 
you put a scaling alpha in here, okay, put a scaling alpha in here, you make this one zero, and by only changing the alpha, at the same time, you change all the delta possible, make a maximum singular value of delta less than one, then you check what's the scaling alpha in here, minimum uh, possible alpha. So then, of course, this is the same, you are saying the same thing by these two. So in this case, uh, m times delta, uh, while the delta is a maximum single value less than one, is alpha minimum minus one. To me, this is uh, like a minimum, uh, sorry, it's like a small gain theorem. So this happens to be the maximum singular value of m, okay? Of m. This, um, we have learned this before, about small gain theorem. Um, we also uh, can discover what is the uh, minimum uh, smallest destabilizing disturbance by doing, uh, making this uh, uh, singular. So what we do is just do uh, one over sigma bar and scale this one like this, then you multiply this one, uh, E1 and U1, so this is the maximum singular value of M. Okay? Well, M, that, we have seen this before, okay? You have sigma 1, sigma 2, you know. This is called uh, dyadic expansion of maximum signal values. Uh, this is not to infinity, okay? It's just to the, uh, the rank, okay? The rank condition, R, okay? So you can always uh, describe this uh, destabilizing factor. This is the most effective way to make the system unstable. Okay? Now, uh, therefore, we can define sigma, uh, the maximum largest singular value of M, also in terms of this one. This one is saying like this one, alpha minimum uh, inverse, okay? So, in, in other words, we are talking about checking Giving M, giving delta, checking M delta connection is internally stable, we simply can consider to check the maximum singular value of M and the maximum singular value of delta that makes, makes determinant of this one zero and make the smallest delta bar, okay, maximum singular value. And one over that, okay, so it is defined as largest singular value of M, okay? But you may say, I cannot change my M. I usually live with the delta. What I should do? Okay. <laughs> okay. So, it doesn't make sense to me as a control back. So you remember, the M is a function of what? Of K, is your controller. If you have different controller, you have a different M. Make sense? Okay. So we are talking about this, that, that later, but now we just focus on the analysis. But you, you may feel strange that uh, why, I'm change, why I have a right to change M, or why even I have a, a method to change delta. Delta is changeable or not? My answer is, you will see. Yeah, so I can change that as well by doing dynamic scaling. I multiply something to the delta, okay? Then I multiply uh, the inverse of this again, so it's become like a scaling, okay? Well, I'll show you that later, okay? Um, so in this, in this sense, you should understand M and the delta. In the unstructured case, it's basically saying that the size of maximum single value of M is actually uh, can be equivalently defined. Of course, given M, you can compute a sigma bar, right? But now, let's say you don't. Uh, you don't uh, directly compute. You define the maximum of this sigma bar possible, because M can change. But I said, don't change too much. Uh, your maximum uh, M, uh, maximum single value is already there. Don't hit that. So, what is that, say, 
in the, this, the ceiling, okay? So that is to say, oh, that depends on your delta, and depends on your m, so these together. So I hope this is clear. Yeah. Uh, remember, m can be changed. Sigma bar m, that is the ceiling that we can hit, okay? But usually it should be lower. And again, how you can make it lower, you can tune the controller k, okay, such that you can see this one. M is the lower linear fractional transformation of P and K. P is nominal plan, K is your controller. Okay? So that is already sucking this one, and you get an M. I hope now everything is starting to make sense. Now it is makes more sense when we is focus on structure for the vision. And you will see this slide and the last slide. Oh, wait, uh. So you will see this slide, the structure for the vision, versus the last slide, unstructured for the vision. From symbols, they are almost the same. Almost the same. What's different is this guy. What's this guy? So it's called uh, bold face delta. Bold face delta. That's a set. Bold face delta is basically writing this way. All the diagonal, block diagonal, is uh, scalar versus fully populated ones. And uh, so this one is uh, a, cons a complex number delta. And here, this is delta. MJ by MJ is a square, square, small squares. So all the discussions are the same, except th this concept is the same, e except that this delta is from this bold face delta, it's called structured uncertainty set. The previously, this delta is not in here, this delta is in the whole complex plan, okay? Whole complex set. P, C, P, Q. So this is a very general, okay? But this is not that general, okay? By saying that, then you know that uh, you also have a, a bottom line here, alpha minimum, okay? Alpha minimum. So this is still true for the M delta, this is still true. But this is less, you know, smaller than this, okay? Smaller than this. Uh, sigma bar m, sigma bar m. What does that mean? I said sigma bar m is the m giving delta what is the highest ceiling of sigma bar here. The higher, of course, better you have more room for the controller design k. But this one basically says that uh, this alpha minimum inverse is smaller than the sigma bar. Well, well, the previous one is saying here, this is equal. Uh, this is equal. That's already a signal saying that we are less conservative here. Okay, we are less conservative here. So in, in the future, instead of using this one, uh, it's called uh, a singular value of m. Okay, instead of using this one, we are using this one, okay, this one as alternative to singular values. And this is because consider the structure in here. That's why this is called structure singular value, SSV. Okay, SSV. So therefore, you can see the SSV is much smaller, potentially much, okay? Depending on the structure here. Smaller than the sigma bar. Okay, so that's the beauty of that. That's the beauty of that. So with that in mind, we can formally define the SSV as a mu. So if you're leaving this structured set, talking about SSV is meaningless. So therefore, the mu has this companion. Uh, so the mu has its companion. Uh, so this should be uh, bold face. This should be a bold face delta. It's hard to type probably. 
this is both is corresponding to this guy. So this delta living in the structural uncertain set, and those uh, uncertainties from this set making the system singular here, and uh, the maximum singular value of that, the minimum infimum of that uh, uh, one of this is called maximum singular value. Uh, a smac, uh, sorry, so structural singular value of the connection matrix M. So this is called mu. Okay, this is V. Okay. Uh, so there's a possibility none of this from this set will make this one zero. So we we uh, we just say this is a good this is a good news. It will post. So the mu is zero. Okay, always uh, will post. So in the future we are going to do. S is one, meaning I have only one uh, block diagonal delta here. So this is if all the structure is all scalar and diagonal repeating. So this is S one and F zero, no fully populated, and the repeating R one of this one is n. So this is the simplest case of all scalar. You can pull out. Remember, pull out uncertainties. That's the case. We just pull them out. Okay, put them out. Okay. So in this case, the structure singular value of M is the spectral radius of M. So that's easy. Okay, that's easy. So, however, if you have a fully populated, uh, so this is S is zero, meaning you don't have a scalar uh, set. F is one is a fully populated. M1 is N, but everything is fully populated. So then the mu will be a maximum singular value of M. Okay? Maximum singular value of M. So you can see the mu should be between the uh, spectral radius of rho and sigma bar of M. Interesting. So it's bracketed in, in between this. So. So let's see an example. Uh, let's see example. Say for example, you have a two scalar, uh, two scalar uncertainties. Okay, they are not the same. So in this case, you have uh, two different scalars. Okay, two different scalar. And you have m is like this, or you have m is like this. So which one is bigger? Let's see. Uh, row M is, is zero, of course. Okay, zero. Sigma bar of this one is beta. Uh, so zero to beta. Mu M uh, determinant is one, not zero. So the mu M should be zero. Okay. So you cannot find a nonlinearity makes the uh, determinant is zero. So it's all uh, mu is considered zero. So in this case, we uh, second one is mu uh, row. Spectral radius is zero because it's singular in here, uh, similar to here. The sigma bar is one in this case. And determinant of this one uh, making uh, delta one, delta two in here. So it's zero always. Make this one zero, so then it should be this. So in this case, the maximum of this one is mu is so these are two extreme cases to give you an idea. So in fact, in fact, depending on the M, depending on the M, so the the row or sigma bar cannot you cannot be used as a reliable bound for robustness analysis. Okay? The only um, reliable ones is using <coughs> mu. Under this uh, un uh, uncertainty structured uncertainty set, so. but you could be going to the extreme. Okay, so zero and beta equal to zero, and here is like uh, zero to one, and you, could, you should be one, but you cannot use zero. So those bounds, going back, you will see. You will see if you use this one could be very bad. You could use this one, could be also very bad. So 
the, the structure of singular value mu makes much better sense in robust analysis. Okay, so this is an uh, example. So it is it is already proving that mu SSB gives you a much tighter bound. Okay, tighter bound. Um, so this is a lot of uh, words in here, um, but um, it's not very hard to. Uh, to, to understand. So let me go through with you. Okay, so you have both diagonal here and D1 and DS. So these are the, uh, F minus 1, MF1, and MF. So supposedly you have a unitary. Uh, well, so these are the uh, unitary uncertainties in this structured uncertainty set. Okay, so you have uncertainty delta, uncertainty set is structured. But I only pick up all those uh, that is unitary, okay? Yeah, unitary. So we we'll define this as U, okay? Because you can scale it in different way, but I don't want this one to be, uh, I want to have a tighter bound. So, so any member from here, any U from this one, okay? And you choose D from this diagonal uh, case, this is a, a, a scaling matrix types. Okay, follow this structure. For the structure, what does that mean? That means um, for the fully populated ones, I only do scaling, um, scalar scaling. Meaning, this M1 by M1 matrix is fully populated. Then I only do D1 a scaling, uh, scaling of this block. But for others, I can choose. Uh, D matrix, which is uh, uh, conjugate, complex conjugate, so it transpose, okay? Uh, these are the scalars, okay, the positives. So then my point is we try to give the M matrix, give this M matrix, I multiply, uh, I want to do a scaling, okay, I want the scaling either by doing this structured scaling here, okay, the uh, bold face, or we choose the uh, uncertainty, uh, unitary uncertainties from this structured uncertainty set. So we are going to have the following property. So if we do this any scaling, but remember, these are not arbitrary. D has to follow this type of thing. So you have block diagram, uh, block diagram of D here, and you have scalar, uh, unitary, uh, for, for those uh, fully populated images. So if you do this D and D minus one, and do this, uh, uh, you, you, you do this uh, scaling, uh, the SSV, structure singular value, will be the same as the previous one. Or you simply say I have uh, uncertainty, unitary uncertainty, left multiply or right multiply, but doesn't matter. You do that only if you pick up D from this set, U from that set, they will be the same. In other words, I can do this scaling whatever way I want. So in other words, because of the scaling, you have to scale it. It's always possible I pick up uh, the largest mu. Uh, so largest spectrum um, radius here, okay? Or why do let this side do this? So you will see that this is already the like I approximate by doing scaling of M will be closer to my SSV, true SSV. Or by doing scaling from this side, I do upper bound. So I, I do the bracketing, okay? To approximate this, uh, approximate this. Okay. So then, in the end, I choose the U from that set, then pick up the maximum of the spectrum radius, or choose smallest sigma four from all the D from this structure. This is a name is called structure. This D is called structured scaling matrix family. The structure of this D has to be uh, this way. Right. 
So by doing a scaling of the M, or you do, if you want to do this uh, maximum uh, spectral radius, and then you just do this like you're doing scaling this side, okay? Or you do uh, directly on the M, okay? Both sides, okay? So that scaling idea is to make you using the traditional uh, method just to give in the connection here. Because usually you, you do not really know what's inside the delta. Or, so if you do this kind of scaling, you only know the structure, information. That scaling already can give you very tight bounds about this. So uh, I hope, so you have two sets, one is the scaling set, another, another is structured scaling set. So you do the scaling here, or you do the scaling here, you will be able to make the mu more accurate. Okay. Remember, because uh, the delta, uh, go back a slide, back one slide. Um, because the delta is from this structured set, okay, uh, depending on the S or F, there are different structures. So in the literature, people already discovered this. Discovered this. So because of this tightness of the spans, we so far cannot see a lot. There are a lot of nodes, okay? Um, so giving a connection, giving a structure of your delta, okay? But depending on the structure in the delta set, structure and certain set, the structure singular values can be, uh, you can use this uh, uh, scaling of M to get an uh, exact, very, uh, this tightest, this exact bound of this. But the condition is S plus F should be less than three. In other words, F is zero. Uh, S is zero. There is no uncertainty. Okay. F is zero, and this one is a uh, one. That means you have all the repeating uh, uncertainties. Okay. With that uncertainty is delta one, delta one, delta one repeating n times. Okay. So that is this case. In this case, you have one uncertainty but it's repeating in different places and you this is will be true if you scale in the m you will get this new very quickly so and that you can see that's kind of solution numeric solution of this new you can search the d to get this new you can search the d do you understand okay so that's easy or you say i don't have a, a Scalar one, I only have one big box uh, of uh, delta is one big chunk of box and uh, it's fully populated. And this answer is also true. You can use this scaling, you can get the bound of this guy. Okay? And if you have a uh, part of this, uh, one block of uh, same scalar uncertainty and one block of uh, uh, one block of uh, fully populated unstructured uncertainty. So this is one unstructured uncertainty and one uh, structured uncertainty repeating diagonal. Okay? So this is also true. Okay? This is also true. Okay? So, so it looks nice, but if you have two such kind of blocks, then the answer is no. These answers are no. You have two, delta 1 and delta 2, repeating blocks, delta 1, delta 2. You have 10, delta 1, 3, delta 2. Totally, I have 13 places with uncertainty. And then you say you have 2. Then this will, may not be true, OK? You may not get easily. So it's a non-convex uh, scaling searching process. Uh, but if you are lucky, you probably will get an answer. But in theory, 
uh, you cannot assume that. So remember this magic equation. Um, 2s plus f less than 3. Okay, it's here, here, less than 3, or equals 3. But this is no. <laughs> so this is 3, no. This is supposed to be yes, no. This is not. Okay. That's very interesting. Uh, I hope this is not boring, but um, it's interesting. So, good news is you can you can uh, you can compute in MATLAB by giving a bond and a row D. So this D L D R, this is kind of uh, you get this row D, you get D left D right. So it's like bracketing this M. So you have delta is uncertainty. Let's talk about this. So delta one, delta two. They are already two, okay? Uh, delta three. So you have three so three different sources. And delta three, four, five. So three, three. So <laughs> so it's this case. It's here. It's, it's here. Three, three. F is three. S is two. Uh, three also. Right. So. And of course, we can uh, do a block diagram and uh, uh, this how they connect. Okay, how they connect. So two, it's one one, it's two three, three three, three zero, and two. Okay. Okay. So um, then, with this connection, with this connection. You will be able to compute the mu directly, compute the mu directly, giving the m, giving the m. Okay. I think the zero here means you have a. So th I think this is the M, then you gave this block how they can uh, show that, how can they show that in the system. <coughs> so then you can get D, L, D, R, just like what we are seeing here. Okay. The D. So the rest of the structure of bus stability is very similar to our uh, small gain theorem, but instead of using small gain theorem, you introduce the mu. Okay, you introduce the mu. Okay. So if you have uh, delta less than one of beta, then uh, the delta mu of this one, this is a structure single value of gj omega less than beta. So instead of using h infinity, using uh, mu. And uh, performance-wise, you can do the same. You can do the same. Okay. And people can introduce uh, nonlinear time-varying uncertainties in there as a structured nonlinear unstructured uh, uncertainties. So. Here, people are introducing uh, this, this uncertainty. So you do this scaling, okay? Do this scaling. Um, you keep doing the scaling, okay? Keep doing the scaling here. And you also do the scaling here, okay? So then you find out this is uh, a lesson one. 
There are worked out examples on our text for the high maneuvering example. And I, I'm, I'm glad to tell you these are already uh, still in the robust control toolbox. Okay. Um, I haven't talked about DK duration yet, but these are examples you can go through. you see uh, one example here. One, uh, <coughs> this is a maximum singular value. So this is the omega, right? This is the omega. For each of the omega, so this is a frequency. So that is a mu structure singular values. And this is a sigma bar, is, a, is this, this one. Maximum singular values, sigma bar. Okay. So you can see that the whole system only at this frequencies are uh, this big, okay, this big. So you probably will think about using a mute bound, and okay, using this mute bound, sometimes will give you uh, less conservative results, okay? By proper uh, weighting tables, okay? Skewed problems, um, we can talk about this one next time, but I'm going to show you the DK duration first. So that is called a synthesis problem. So you have a nominal system here, there's a performance assessment, then there's a controller in here. You want to uh, check, okay? Uh, but remember, uh, this is called mu synthesis. Uh, there's also an uh, idea called um, DK iteration. The reason we call DK iteration is because we know what is the uncertainty here, right? And we know the structure. Then I can construct a structure set for scaling D, okay? The D matrix should be from this set. This is, we know, if we know the delta structures of delta, we pull out the other, then we know the D, how, should, how D should be constructed from this set. So by using this, we are going to scale it, okay? We are going to scale it. So we are going to scale it. This is the scaling. This is my M matrix, M. G and K, we have M, right? It's M matrix. So this is M, my M matrix, okay? Yeah. To solve the problem, we have two variables to do. Why is pick up D of D inverse? So these are all uh, actually infinity uh, space. Um, then, so we make this, this is my mu, right? I'll make my mu minimum, okay? Make my mu minimum by choosing the control K. If my mu is as small as possible, then that means I can tolerate the uncertainty delta here as big as possible, make sense? So you, you, you optimize the K such that um, the mu is smallest. Uh, so, uh, we are basically living on a mu norm, okay, a mu norm, so basically called mu norm. Uh, mu norm means I sweep my delta uh, omega, all frequencies, so this GK, uh, lower linear transfer, uh, transform matrix, uh, FL, okay, so G comma K. So this G comma K, you can write in this format. And um, so choosing uh, this K in here, so, so this, this is synthesis is called mu synthesis. Design a K such that the mu is smallest. 
and the mu is uh, from this sensor in this set. But solving this problem is very difficult. Uh, as we previously discussed that we can choose a structured scaling matrix T from that structured scaling matrix family. Can do the scaling that it will be approximate this mu SSB. This is will be SSB. But when when we say this is a good approximation to SSB, we already say that 2s plus f less than 3. This tape I remind you. When it is not the case, you cannot do that. So if it is not the case, we cannot do that. Okay? We cannot do that. So So if it is not that case, you have to do H2 H infinity framework instead of using a new norm. Instead of using a new norm. So then we do the scaling here and then we do K. So it's kind of two layer optimization. I choose the K. Yeah. So this is a this is a this is a single uh, variable, single vector, okay, single variable optimization. Okay, this is optimization. Then this one, we do two optimizations here, okay, K and D. So usually you uh, iteratively solve K and D. So minimizing over K with D fixed, then you minimize pointwise over D with K fixed, then you again and again. So this kind of like you have two variables, you fix one variable, then optimize this, then you get optimal, you fix this one, you optimize that, you kind of alternative uh, way to do. This is called DK iteration. I uh, hope you understand. K stands for controller. And D stands for the structured scaling matrix family. Okay. So you pick up the D from that family. Okay. Uh, so this is uh, the framework, I hope. But again, let me warn you that using this one to replace this mu norm is not always theoretically possible. So right now, probably you focus on 2s plus f. 2s plus f less than three cases. Or other Cases, there's no theoretical guarantee, but, but fortunately, okay, or if you are lucky, <laughs> you do this iteration, it will come out okay for you. And usually the case will work. I said usually. <laughs> you so basically, not. you want your controller and your uncertain uh -huh. to find, try to find a mu. A okay. mu. But this is like, a ref you can say this is kind of like scaling to refine, to reduce the conservatives, conservatism. You, you see that way, it's also fine. But theoretically, there's no guarantee this will convert to the true, so when, when true solution, when the 2s plus f, not less than or equals to 3, okay? That's the very important message. A lot of people learn decay iteration, but they didn't realize this only works for sure for very small class of problems when structured uh, uncertainty set is special. 2s plus f less than or equals to 3. Other than that, it may work. Usually it will work. So, I don't know. But this is all textbook says. I hope you guys can think about put this into a big data driven framework, probably will be very interesting, very interesting. So basically, uh, in, in other ideas, it's like, you fix the D, you do this uh, minimization, this is quite standard to infinity optimization. Then you fix K, you do search the infinement, standard convex, this is convex optimization. And uh, you can also do frequency domain point wise, like this, okay? 
it all ends up doing a maximum singular values of something. So, uh, and when s is zero, meaning uh, you have new structure, new scalar blocks, everything is fully populated. So, uh, which is uh, always will work. Okay, it's less than three, right? So we can zoom in more details to the decay iteration. We run out of time. We'll continue on Wednesday uh, on this topic. And, uh, in fact, this is my uh, second last slide. Uh, second last slide. So mu and mu synthesis. Okay, mu and mu synthesis. We're going to stop here. Next lecture, I will overlap a little bit, share some examples, and explain skewed problem. Then we move to um, parameterization issue. Uh, we talk about Euler parameterization. At, that, at this point, uh, curve prime factorization start to be very useful. Because Euler used this initially to derive parameterization. However, all the state space formulation were done in the 90s. Okay? So with that, I'll let you go and see you on the state. I'll be in my office until late today.